So in this video, we're gonna take a look at trigger points. And for this, we're looking at the muscles of the calves. So we've got a lot of muscles in here, gastrocnemius most superficially, that one goes. We've got soleus, that one goes. And we've got the muscles that control the toes and also tibialis posterioris. There's a lot in here. How do we know which muscle we're on? Well, hopefully we'll figure that one out as we go. There are different ways we can position things to be more accurate and specific with the muscle that we're targeting. Ultimately, does it really matter? If we're doing a massage and we found a trigger point, we'll treat the, the, the trigger point. We don't need to be specific about gastrocnemius or soleus or tibialis posterior. So let's take a look. We're gonna begin just by spreading some massage wax and hopefully we've warmed up the area. We've got a general idea of what's going on with the tissues and how they feel before we start to go particularly deep. So let's move through with petrissage. And the reason that we're beginning with petrissage is because we need to stroke across these fibers to try and identify an area of palpable tightness. We're looking for a taut, palpable band of fibers. So I'm gonna do that with my fingers, coming slowly across the fibers. And I'm looking out for visual cues from the patient, but also I will ask them. And don't hesitate to ask them where is the most tender spot. Usually what we'll do is pass all the way through the fibers once or twice, and then we'll say, can you please let me know when we hit the most tender spot? Okay, this time. About there. About there, okay. So it's feedback from the client to say it's about there. So it's somewhere along this line of fibers that we're gonna begin the hunt for the trigger point. Now we've not got any traditional trigger point feedback here. Traditional trigger point feedback would be referred pain. So it's gonna be somewhere up or down the leg or maybe even around the side. You can get it with a rotator cuff where it goes around to the front of the shoulder when you're palpating the back of the shoulder blade. Um, also looking for a localized twitch response. That means that we need to kind of look through the area so our peripheral vision is working and we can see a twitch if it happens. We may or we may not get that. Uh, for the sake of a tutorial, it's unlikely, but let's see what we how we get on. We're gonna go along this line of fibers. Try to imagine that you can see that. I'm gonna go all the way up, as far as I can go deeply, which is about here before we get into Popliteus, and then back down the opposite way. And I'm looking out for any areas that I can feel particular restriction, twitching, or referred pain feedback from the client. There was a twitch. Okay, so hopefully what will happen now, I'll pass back over it and we'll find that twitch again. Sometimes that stroke moving through the twitch is actually a form of treatment in itself. So don't get too carried away and looking to replicate a twitch that you find. Going in quite deep with the pressure now. Can you give me a number between one and 10 for that pressure? Um, seven. Okay, so seven, that's the edge. We don't want to go any further than that. Okay, so we're not finding that twitch again, so now we'll go by the patient's feedback. So I'm gonna pass along that line again. Can you let me know when we hit the most tender spot? And hopefully they've got an idea as to when that was from the time before. About there. Okay, and that ties in with where I'm feeling the resistance, probably because it is the medial head of the gastroc and it's into the meat of the muscle belly. Number? Um. Okay, six is a good place to start. We don't wanna go above an eight. I'm gonna hold that and keep the pressure constant. My job now is to protect my thumb more than anything. So I might go and put a hand across with this thumb putting the pressure in so that you can see what's happening. Let's just apply some over the top pressure with the opposite thumb. Trying to keep the thumb touching the skin relaxed or as relaxed as it can be. And by keeping that pressure consistent over 20 to 30 seconds, we're looking for that number to drop from a six, hopefully by at least a couple or two or three points. Yeah, that's all we've dropped. Good, number? Yeah. Uh, I would say four. Okay, so client saying we're down to a four, which is great. It's been about 20 to 25 seconds, so let's repeat. Deep breath in for me. Breathe out, and as she breathes out and relax, the body's naturally gonna relax and we can push in a bit deeper. Let me know when we hit a six. Now. Okay, so I'm putting some more pressure in and we've hit a six. So we're gonna repeat the same process again. I'm going to keep that pressure constant. You let me know when things start to drop. Yeah, it's dropped. Great number. Three. Perfect. So let's repeat one more time because it feels like we can go a bit deeper. Deep breath in and breathe out and relax. Pushing in gradually deeper. Let me know when we hit a six, please. About 
Yeah, we're going to hold that now. Great, okay. So we're back at a six. This is the final time. We don't want to hold this really for any longer than about 90 seconds, maybe two minutes tops. I'm going to hold that until that dissipates. That's dropped. Good. Number? Two. Excellent. Two. Perfect. So now the question is how do we come off? There's a few different theories, a few different ways to do so. And I'll show you the different options now. So we can go with the old super compensation, blood flow, erythema into the area, rushes in for that sudden release of pressure. I'm not a fan of that at all. We can go with a very slow release because what we're trying to do is facilitate relaxation and then some effleurage over the top, which definitely one of my favorite methods. Back into that NMT, that trigger point release, we can come off with some slow circular movements, which are frictions, into some more global massage. Or if you want to get really creative, we think there's some work to be done now on a deeper level with the fibers at hand, we can encourage some active movements of some active release or STR. So where you are there, I want you just to bring your toes up towards your knee, dorsiflex for me, other way, opposite of a tiptoe. Good, whole ankle, brilliant. I can feel that muscle stretching and relax. Good, and then repeat one more time. So with the client dorsiflexing their ankle, they're bringing those fibers into a stretch with my pressure down on those tissues. It's gonna stretch out everything between my pressure point and the insertion and relax. Make sure to flush out with some general massage. And then we can reassess, just making sure not to put too much deep pressure into the area that you've just spent a long time because there will be some irritation, some inflammation, potentially some pain there afterwards.